All right, so we're gonna get this stream started. This is the first time that we've streamed the Twip Pro Photo Critique, and uh, hopefully it won't be the last, so. Yeah, it's been the first time in a while. We did it a long time ago. <clears throat> we did, yeah, we did, yeah, but tools have changed and everything has changed, so it's time to do a live again and see if it sticks this time, right? So. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this is going to be good. So let's go split screen here. And I want to do this a little bit differently because uh, normally what I do is we record these offline, Troy, and then I take that file, I do a little bit of editing to it, you know, sweeten the audio, add some title graphics to the beginning and the yeah. end, to the beginning and the end, and then our lower thirds, and then boom, we're done. Um, this one, um, I may do that down the road where I add those live in while we're streaming, but I want to keep this one relatively simple. So... Boom, we're just going to do this and cool. see what it looks like. So it's going to be fun. I'm excited to see this. We have a ton of people <laughs> that, yes, submitted, we do. Yes. that submitted images for this this particular this uh, this image critique. And apparently people like cats. <laughs> yes. There's and, a dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and dogs. And dogs. <laughs> yep. And a vole. We have a vole. Yes. Yeah, which I didn't even know that was. A bank vole, whatever that is. So It's a hamster. It's a hamster. Well, yeah. it looks like a hamster. Maybe it's not a hamster. But... It's a rodent. It's yeah. Kind of rodent. If you see it looks like a hamster, we all know what that looks like. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, let's uh, let's do this. So uh, before okay. we before we kick it off, I want to let folks know that I am I'm speaking at this year's NAB, which is a virtual NAB, and um, in the Twip Pro community, I'm going to be giving away a pass to attend NAB, and this NAB is interesting because it's all Zoom based. Right. So you get to hang out at home, jump in a Zoom room and uh, and enjoy all these sessions. The grid is pretty impressive of speakers that are on there. I get to do two, three talks um, on this stuff, what I do here, like live streaming and podcasting and all that kind of stuff, which is appropriate for NAB. Um, and I'm excited. This is I'm excited and honored that they asked me to do this. And it's my first time doing it. I was going to do it. Troy, it was live. Right. So I was going to be in Vegas a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Presenting nervously presenting from the NAB stage. <laughs> um, and then this, you know, this little thing happened and now we're doing it virtually. But still, I'm right. still excited. But I'm less I'm less nervous because I sit in front of this, this dang camera all the time. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I can't heckle you from the audience now like I was going to do. You can. You just have to type your heckles, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not quite the same. It's not quite the same. It's not quite the same. Cool. All right. Let's do this. Um, so first of all, yeah, this one was The Secret Lives or The Secret World of Pets. Yep. Um, so we're going to go through the submissions, the pet submissions into the TWIP community. Um, the next one we decided is going to be color, right? I think yeah. that's where we're going to go with this yeah, one. Yeah, colors. So, yep. Colors, yeah. So, yeah, the, the thing is colors have to be the subject of the image, not a supporting character. Like when we talk about black and white, we talk about you have to look at a color image and see if color is supporting the image or detracting from the main story that you're trying to tell with the image. In this case, we're saying the color itself is, is the subject. The subject. Yep. Yeah, it is the subject. So... Whatever your favorite color is or whatever, however you want to interpret that, it's up to you. But, you know, we expect to see some colorful rainbow photographs. You know, should we, should be, should Something be creative. Yes. Yes. There's lots of there's lots of good opportunity with color, especially with the flowers. Now everything's blooming. We got beautiful blue skies. We got, you know, whatever. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So this is cool. I'm, I'm excited. The stream is holding up just so inside baseball, people that are watching this, um, <laughs> The wonderful people at NAB uh, hooked me up with some some loner gear that to make my stream a little bit better for when I do the uh, when I do my presentation. So I'm using it now, kind of as a test <laughs> to make sure make sure everything works properly. And so far, it's, it's so good. We'll see if if we make it through this hour. Uh, but let's let's dive in. You ready to you ready to look at yeah. some images? Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and share my MacBook Pro right now. So let's go ahead and switch over to this camera. There we go. All right. First shot is from Alicia. Look at this little putty. Oh, I love that. Look at that. Yeah, those eyes. The little eyes in there. See, cats rock. How can yeah. you not like a cat? 
<laughs> like, who are these people that don't like cats? Uh, this cat wants to attack. I can tell. Like, all right. Like, the eyes are big. I love that. Ears are pointed forward. That's fantastic. Focus is all the way through the face. I like that. And I love that red. That's that's really beautiful in this image. You got these dark tones of the cat. And that red background is really nice. So it's simple. It's not distracting. Um, it's pseudo monochromatic in the sense that we're, or it's like a duo tone, right? You got that gold of the cat, the darks, and then that red. So I think they they all work really well together. I love the crop too. Shallow yeah. depth of field. Yeah, I like it. It's hard to take a bad picture of a cat. Just saying. Yeah, you know, sometimes they just don't cooperate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, that's that's what makes them cats. Yeah. So cool. Good shot, Alicia. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot. Not a lot else to do to that. That's great. No. No. Not a whole lot to add to that one. And another cat from Ames Brooks. <laughs> we have a lot of cats. So yeah. Cats are secretly <laughs> taking over the world <laughs> silently. <laughs> but look is... at that face. Look at that. See, cats just have that little face. Yeah, that's very cute. Yeah, that's really great. Um, this I love the eye contact. Uh, I, I think that the you know that right side that's that's bright. You know, like on the chest of the cat, um, that really needs to be brought down. Maybe it's overexposed, or maybe that's just uh, streaming. Oh, that yeah, it's... like right, right in here in this area. Yeah, yeah. And you know, this we could really crop off maybe half of that right hand side, right, mm. and just bring the exposure down a bit, uh, saturate those colors just a tad, or just the density of the overall image. But bring you right into those eyes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's that's really it. I mean, even the nose is is slightly out of focus, um, which is you know okay for the most part. You want to kind of keep their whole face in focus, mm -hmm. but shallow shallow looks good as long as the eyes are there. And this one's definitely nailed that right up yeah. to the the whiskers, the eyebrows. Yep, yep, I agree. Yeah, crop in a little bit on the left side a little bit. And I, I thought you were going to get more more angry about this shot because you're not a fan of amputations. Well, that's why I said <laughs> crop off the right side a little bit. <laughs> Make it more of a portrait. Right? Yeah. And and if you really want to push this image even further, um, you know, clean up some of those highlights in the eyes. You know, really just one reflection is nice. You know, one, one catch light. Yeah. So like oh, the camera so left. So you would actually take a catch light out? I never. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's because it 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 you don't need those little white dots in the eyes for any other reason. Um, we do like that specular highlight in the eyes because it shows you know that sort of aliveness and the awakeness in the direction of light. And so multiple catch lights just remove everything except for the main catch light. Okay, very good. Yeah, works works in humans too. I always heard people say, you know, I've, I've seen different techniques and different recommendations for adding catch lights. But I thought the more not not that you want you know a bunch of speckles in the in the eyes, but I always thought m like multiple gave you more depth and you know said the the more life because it means the eyes are wet and it's liquid, therefore this thing is alive. You know, but you're saying no, too much is too much. Yeah, I think too much is too much. They become distracting. Um, there's a there's an image coming up from you. I think is a perfect example of what a beautiful highlight in an eye looks like. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's really simple. Awesome. All right. But if you go back to like the painted, the, the artists, the painters, mm -hmm. uh, they didn't paint multiple catch lights. Usually it's one, maybe a secondary catch light, just like under the eye to kind of bring the eye up. But it's it's very, very simple. Yeah. Try it. Play All with right. it. I will. I will. Absolutely. And that's like literally we've done how many of these things? 114 <laughs> now, right? Yeah. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> so. All right. Let's move on to the next shot here. Look at this guy. <laughs> I love this shot, man. <laughs> I love this shot. This oh is like, God. I will eat your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh look at, he just looks evil. Let's look, look, let's zoom in. Can I zoom in over here? Let's see. Yeah, look at this. I just love that. I love his, I even love his collar kind of hanging down. Like he's just so ragged. He doesn't even care. <laughs> he's even smiling. Look at the smile. You know what though? It, it, it There's a piece of grass coming up underneath him between his legs. It looks like he's taking a wee. Oh yeah, it does. Look at that. And you're disturbing it, right? <laughs> you're disturbing <laughs> this intimate that's moment he, with this guy. He's, that's a that's a pee face. <laughs> I don't know. I don't make that face when I do it. 
<laughs> I don't know what you guys do in Southern California. <laughs> Us Northerners, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, right, right. That's not the face you make. No. Um, no. Oh, this I, is good. I like the shot. I like the composition. Uh, I know you're going to probably say that you, his, his uh, stage left foot or stage right foot is too close to the border. It's touching. Well, that doesn't bother me too much. I don't. I'm not a big fan of borders anyway. Uh, but I, I just like none of that matters when I look at this this face because I go right into the face, especially since he's got it off balanced. It's off to the side, you know. I love that composition of it, and I just, I just love it. Looks like this dude is just guarding, and you'd be walking by this house, and you just look to the right <laughs> and see that face, and keep walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I wish that there was a little bit more space underneath his right paw. I think that would, I think aesthetically, that could help a bit. And I'm not a huge fan of all this blank space on camera left. Um, it, it, you know, just as a portrait presentation or just as a presentation overall, I, it doesn't serve a purpose. Like, I think our eyes keep bouncing there and wondering, you know, oh, what am I missing? Oh, OK, I come back to my subject. Then I look to the space on the left. Great for copy. I mean, this would be an amazing, uh, you know, uh, time in our lives type quote goes right there you know yeah right <laughs> Quarantine I mean, you can put almost 45. this is a meme this is a meme shot you can almost put any yeah you know? yeah yeah like let's do a, we should do a caption contest in the in the community and say <laughs> you know caption this with your feelings about being quarantined <laughs> i hate that's how you can give away one of the nab tickets there you go a <laughs> caption contest perfect i love it I love it. Um, but I think if you if you crop off the right side, the left side, camera left, and you and you center the puppy right dead center, make it square. I think then what you do is you really draw us in into the into the dog's face even more. Just a choice, whichever one that you prefer in the image. Um, but I do I do love this, and the black and white treatment is fantastic. Very well done. Yeah, very very well done. I love it. Cool. All right. Moving right along. Craig Stampley is up next. <laughs> oh, Polly. That's Polly. Yeah, that's Polly. Yeah. Polly, on, Polly on game night. Family game night. There. Oh, is that what he says? Yeah. 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 That's great. That's, that's so much fun. And it's so timeless, too, right? Like, that's a family portrait right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, you know, you know what I just noticed? This is so weird. Looking at it big right here i finally noticed the the feet in the in the foreground at the bottom yep. left and the right of the frame i had been looking at the dog and up and it just kind of looked right by the foreground for you that makes it even more strong so yeah 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 it's really great i i really don't have a lot to add to this i like all the elements i like you know the feet the different outfits on everybody's feet like looks like somebody's got pajamas on the far side no no shoes the socks and then the, you know, the slippers are kicked off, you know, and Polly's just like, they're totally chilling, um, <clears throat> you know, being part of the family, happy to be around her humans. Yep. Yeah. Craig, that's... Craig, if we ever make it down under to hang with you, uh, I'm participating in family game night. I, tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what game they were playing. What's, what's the, what's the, family oh yeah, game? that's true. Uh -huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, cool shot, great, though. great shot, it. Greg. I, I really don't have a lot to add to that. You did great. Yep. All right, Eric Pronsky is up next. Look at this little hot dog. <laughs> Look, he's, he's like stepping through a little fence or something. Uh huh. Yeah, or coming down steps. Yeah, no, yeah, he's coming through fence. Yeah, a little fence. Yeah, that's they all they always look a little worried, these dogs. I don't know why. Is it me? They just you look at their faces and they just look like they're micro puppies. They're so tiny. Like the imagine how big the world is to them. Yeah, but that other dog, like <laughs> <laughs> let's go back. How big is the world to this guy? Right? <laughs> so look at that face and then look at this face, right? So <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, one this guy wants to cuddle. The other guy just wants you to get out of his way so he can jump back in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, these dogs. I love them. I love them. What do you think? What do, okay, looking at this, taking the cuteness factor out of it and looking at it from a photographic compositional standpoint, what do you think? Um, I, I think it's really great. I, I would just bring it up from the bottom um, and, you know, maybe uh, come up just into the dog's chest, just below the tags. I 
I don't think we need that leg extending down there, and then it cuts out some of that extra bright on the lower right corner. We are, that's a little distracting already, but I'm assuming that that's just because it's on the web. Yeah. Um, but yeah. definitely crop up from the bottom. Yeah, make it more of a portrait, right? Yeah, but it's but it's great, and just you know something to consider when we're photographing pets. Um, just like a human, you get a different mood when they're not looking at the camera when they're looking off versus when they're looking at the camera. So sometimes you want them to look away, but like imagine the shot of this dog turning his head and looking right dead in the camera. It would change the impact, right? It would be so much more powerful. So yeah, yep. Very cool. I like it. I like it. Yeah, good treatment too. Nice. I love the black and white, of course. Man, this this dog is escaping his lockdown too. Look at him. <laughs> the fence. Is he the coast clear? Out. Is anybody watching? I gotta make a quick run. <laughs> All right. Next shot here is from Jack Hubs. Oh look at this guy. Oh, he's like, Dad, just take me outside. I just want to go outside. <laughs> uh -huh. Look at that. How can you turn down that face? Right, right. I would probably, I think, uh, I'm feeling this one in black and white, not just because of the other ones were, but that blue in the top left corner, uh, I feel is very distracting. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could desaturate the blue and just make it gray and then leave, you know, the tones of of the dog, you know, the way that they are. But mm -hmm. I feel like that blue is really kind of killing it for me. Yeah. What about the, the shadowing on the face? Would you bring those the, the eyes up a little bit or are you good with them the way they are? No, what I was going to say is I would bring everything down um, because let that, you know, let the contrast in the lighting work. Right? So let the side of the face that's closest to the window, I'm assuming it's a window, the light source, bring that down to be a really good exposure. Let the shadow side fall off. You can have that dramatic contrast. It's fine. I think it, I think it adds to the, you know, to the image, to the drama. Yeah. Very cool. Like yeah. These are some great portraits. Oh, I know. These are good. All right. Look at that. Uh, James Glennie's yeah, up next. Say, <laughs> this is James. We've seen we've seen her him her before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these, these shots definitely need captions, man. I tell you, dude. It's like these should all have a caption contest for every shot. Now, when I first look at this shot, I think, you know, fear, you know, or worried, or I'm scared of something, or what the heck is that over there on the horizon? It's coming this way. I don't I don't see fear I see treats like when do I get my treats? oh the begging yeah, face so yeah because the eyes are big um now notice the catch lights in this eyes in, in these eyes like these catch lights are perfect they're they're beautiful they're single <clears throat> they're simple these are the kind of catch lights that I was referring to so if you had a fill on camera left you would want to take that out because uh, you don't really need it. But notice how under the eyes are lit. You've got that nice brightness on the lower half of the eye. Mm -hmm. um, that's always wonderful. That's sort of a reflection coming in that just shows like life in the eyes and they, they're kind of crystal clear and they glow. So, but I, I see a butterfly in her face. Don't you, do you see the butterfly? Like the way... <laughs> No, I don't see a butterfly. <laughs> the ears. This, this is a Rorschach test. I don't see ears of the tips of the wings, and then the the uh, the whiskers of the bottoms of the wings, like the nose is the body, and then the. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at butterfly no, too much. No, I don't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> I see a T Rex. I don't know. <laughs> oh no, I don't see anything in there. What? Um, yeah, my only suggestion to this one is is clean up that that item in the lower left hand corner, whatever's there. We don't. We don't really need that, and I think that would be really easy to take out. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. Yeah, you could, you could. That looks like a job for content aware Phil. Oh yeah, that would probably just grab it easy. It would but eat that right out of there. Yeah. Yeah, there's really nothing overlapping it, so it's super easy to remove. Yeah. 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 That's good, and the background is kind of mushy and fuzzy. So yep. there's there's no crazy repeating patterns that you have to mask or anything. Yeah, yeah, and I and I love how this is nearly black and white just just by default. Mm -hmm, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a black and white cat. I love that. Yeah, yep. the monochromatic cat. <laughs> yeah, love it. Cool. Yeah, good shot. I think I think James shown his workspace before. Like he's got a cat bed right next to his his monitor on the left. So I wonder if this if this is one of the cats that lays there. Probably. All right, next shot up is from Joshua Summerfelt. You know, <laughs> I saw this shot and totally made it. Like, <laughs> cats do this. You know, whenever I see a shot like this, it's like cats think they have the power of invisibility, but don't. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. They're choosing 
They're choosing to let you see them. Oh, this is a trick. Oh, this yeah. This is a trick. Yeah. Right? When, you, when you blink, the cat is gone. And it will be behind you. You know it's true. Yeah, that's true. You can't see me. <laughs> I love this shot. This is this is a cool shot, though. I mean, this definitely captures the personality of cats. And it shows us that Joshua loves cats because that's like, if I'm l reading this right, that is a massive little cat gem thing he's got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love it. And and I'll say, um, at first I thought, well, you know, the carpet, the, 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 you know, the play thing or whatever is too bright. And then I thought, no, because the cat's hidden in the shadow and i love that i love how it's just barely peeking out um i would probably crop off the left side maybe a third just to that first vertical post in the back mm -hmm. all that negative space over there doesn't really add i mean it would be cool maybe if there was a tail or another face over there or something right but just make I it i almost extremely... want to see it like like cropped like right around here like really tight to have like this this diagonal line um, bisecting the image like it is now, but cropped in really tight so that it's almost graphical, like this black and white, you know, left and right side of the frame with the cat is the only thing that's interrupting it. You know, otherwise, like the stuff like down here on the left, the, like you say, we don't really need all that. We care about what's right in this area right there. Right. And I think that would work really well. I, I do like this really tall vertical look with the base because I can see a little bit of the ground. So I'm, I'm kind of with you. I like both crops. I, I like mm -hmm. the really tight, just a uh, portrait of the cat with that. Um, what do you call it? Like his play palace or like, I don't know, a couch or whatever yeah. he's hiding behind. It's a cat gym. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Just, just tighten up the crop a little bit, crop mm -hmm. in the left, crop in the right. And then, and then maybe a crop like what Frederick is saying. Yeah. Yeah. I love to see that. Cool I dig shot. it. Though. I like it. I love I like it. That yeah. Look. I like that look. Yeah, you that can't cat's see watching me. you. <laughs> I was never here. I was never here. <laughs> You're going to feed me now. It's, exactly. Don't go to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah. Our cats our cats do that with, with Margie. They'll they'll sit, kind of sit somewhere and just stare from across the room. Oh, and Margie yeah. will look over and be like, oh, they want fed. All right, I got to go feed them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's freaky. This is my cat. So this is my, my cat who's now passed away. Her name was Baba. Um, her nickname was Bobalicious, and also uh, her full name was Bastet, which was the Egypt or is the Egyptian cat goddess. Oh so, wow! Yep, yep. This Very is a clever. shot. She, this is her in her favorite spot in the window, you know, and me annoying her, making sounds to get her to look in my direction <laughs> so I could get the shot. And she wasn't looking at you, I noticed. Uh, uh she was looking out. She would never look at me. She knew I was trying to take the picture. She would always look off like that and never directly into the camera. Yeah. Yeah, that was by choice. Yeah, this is beautiful. I love Thank those you. eyes. The colors are coming through fantastic. The nose is is sharp. You know, the that's that's part of their face. So just like a human, we want to make sure that for the most part, we keep that sharp through the eyes. Um, the back ears are soft, which I, I totally like that. So everything in here is is good. The catch lights in here are fantastic. I always look at the catch lights. Um, you know the all, small all one. Just in... window light. Yeah, that's all serendipitous. It was she just happened yep. to be there, and I was literally when I got this shot, I was literally walking out the door on the way to work, and <laughs> she was sitting there. I was like, "Oh, okay, crap! I got to get my camera real quick." <laughs> <laughs> yep. Snap it, throw the camera down, go go to work. You know? <laughs> yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. You yeah. got to do it. Now this is this is great. The crop is good. I don't really see anything, and definitely has to be color. Because you have to see those eyes and that pink nose. That's just great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I love about it. Because she's a she's kind of a gray cat, uh, a medium hair gray cat, and uh, the only splashes of color on her were her eyes, her nose, you know, her ears, and right. the pads of her feet. That was it. So loved it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's perfect. Thank you. All, all right, something not a cat now. <laughs> so, right. It's cat food now. <laughs> well. This cat would certainly chase that. <laughs> Absolutely. All these animals that are in this would chase each other, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is a bank vole from a Karen bank Sweeney. Vole. Yes. A bank vole, yes. Bank which I, when I first looked at it, I thought it was either a mouse or a uh, hamster or a gerbil or something like that. But apparently it's a relative of those guys called a bank vole. 
that's really cool that's really neat it's like it's it's getting ready to jump up on that little piece of wood or i don't know what it's doing is it looking at me <laughs> yeah, he could be looking at you you'll never know so. you'll never know he looks like he needs a keyboard in front of him <laughs> <laughs> he's dead mouse right there exactly exactly it's dead mouse <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. I nice. love it. That's a cool shot. Those little guys, man. I don't know why some people get so freaked out by looking at these little rodents. I can I see a it. nasty rat with disease and everything, but these guys, no, come don't, on. Don't lick it. Just look at it. Right. <laughs> yeah, don't eat it. Don't look at yeah, it. You don't know. mean to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Although, in some places of the world, they do consume well, these guys. So. Um, you know, I would say, speaking to the image, I would say uh, I like the key line. I like that lime green key line. I think that's wonderful. It offsets it in this presentation, especially. Um, but we could certainly crop in quite a bit. We, you know, half of the space on the right and certainly half of the space on the top we don't need. So just crop that in. And it feels like this is out of focus or there was some motion blur or something like that. So I don't know if it's just me or if you can see that, like the highlight. I do see that a little bit. Yeah, the highlight in the eyes is a little bit oh. soft. It, it looks like it's motion blur, to be honest with you. Yeah, it could be. And maybe this is just cropped in a lot. I don't know how close you can get to these guys. So maybe it's just cropped in a lot. So Yeah, yeah. And some extreme depth of field going on there, too. Right, right. And this is this is where Joshua would be in, could offer some expert advice because he photographs a lot out in nature with long lens and long macros and you know, how, how do you, how do you do that? Right. Like you pushing mm -hmm. your ISO, do you, you know, carry a sandbag with you and lay on that? Like that's, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. easy. You would think it should be easy. Right. But it's, it's not, it is not yeah. brides and voles hard, hard to, hard to get a good shot of them. They move a lot. Very cool. Thank you, Karen. I love this guy. Yeah, it's great. All right. <clears throat> Next shot is from lamb. Look at that. <laughs> we actually see a human yeah. in one of the shots now. Look at this cat. Look at that. Oh, great. That cat's like, I love you. Feed me. Uh -huh. Give me some attention. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about, they like, it's like three things that cats want, right? They want to sleep, they want some food, and they want you to pet them every now and then. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not too much not too it's much not too much well in it's funny in the latest uh star wars there's this new bot that during the scene uh, i can't remember who it is walks over to touch the bot and the bot backs up and says no thank you no thank you oh yeah yeah that's one of our cats that's our cat juju juju backs up all the time so if you walk over to pet juju she backs up and i can hear that in my head the the personalities that they have right they choose the interaction that's right um yeah. Yeah, this is this is really great. So there's obviously a selfie of, you know, the cat kind of loving on her, on her human. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The cat, the ultimate the ultimate shy predator. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, right. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks, Lamb, for that. Yeah. In the Hitchhiker's Guide, they said it was the dolphins that were the super intelligent running the world. But I, I think it's the cats. I think they're working together. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> they have a land sea kind of agreement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this shot is uh, from Mark Charette. This is great. This is, I just love that super low <clears throat> wide angle shot. Yeah. Wish we had a little bit more space next to the paw, which you already knew I was going to say that. Yeah, I thought you were going to talk. Start with the top, you know, a little bit more space at the top and and okay next to that. the paw. No, I'm okay with that because the ear is well within the frame, but it really the mask of the face, the eyes are well within the frame. Mm -hmm. um, in in this particular case, I would probably try to bring up the the camera left side of the eye just a tad, not so it looks fake, but just a little bit because the the back hind quarters of the dog is brighter than the face and they're really kind of close they're stacking so we're getting distracted to that bright spot on the right um and try to i would just try to change that balance a little bit but but expression wise i love the expression of this guy he's like this looks like he was just he was just disturbed yeah right? he was yeah he was yeah sleeping he was on a cloud chasing rabbits somewhere like, on, Dad. <laughs> really? again uh -huh. again or that like the one word caption would be what <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't even sleep. Jeez. Right, right, right. I know, I know. Our pets tolerate so much of our intrusion in their day. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but this is really but they, great. They allow you to live with him, so, you know. They do. They do. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Great shot, Mark. I, I really don't have a lot else to add. Just, you know, yeah. the highlight balance. That's really it. Just that mm -hmm. the face. But yeah, very perfect. nice shot. And I'm not going to. It's mention... hard to critique shots of people's children. You know, it's well, like. Yeah. And, and what I was going to say is I'm not going to mention it's tilting to the right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. But Mark should already know that. So he did this on purpose. It's intentional. Yeah, it's intentional. He just wanted All to right. see if we'd notice. Mark Harris is up next with this little putty. Oh, look at that. And Troy, the cat's name is Troy. Nice. It's Troy. Troy the ginger doing homework. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And and for those those cat owners, we know this is the very indignant, you're not paying enough attention to me, I'm going to lay on your stuff look. Because uh -huh. they're listening to you, but they're not looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you know what you know what this pile of papers needs <laughs> cat hair. It's missing cat hair. I need to get, get some over here. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I found a surface in the home without cat hair on it. Let me get over there and get, take care of that real quick. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, you know, I can't remember. We had a we had a a, a ginger tabby adopt us, and it was a male. And I want to say that most ginger tabbies are female is if that, like there's there's something about that i can't remember i have to look oh, that interesting. up interesting i didn't know that yeah yeah they're predominantly you know one sex or the other but um what a great shot i i i dig it i dig it even the little pen sticking in there because without that we really don't realize like oh this is a working space uh-huh yeah that's that that's that teal and orange Hollywood color grade right there. <laughs> right, right. And as I do, I'm trying to read the document. So it says restrictions B question mark. And then I think artists is the bottom word. I'm like, what? What are, what are we reading? <laughs> what are we working on? You see that? That's interesting you say that because like whenever you look at a photo that has words in it, we have to read the words and try to decipher them right it's like a, so. a human theme a human thing we're compelled to read if there's words in a shot. Right. Right. I agree. Yeah. There's, there's something in there. Like it's a puzzle. Like I have to mm -hmm. figure out what the puzzle is. That's right. Um, it looks to me like it's hard to tell. I'm trying to wonder whether or not there's been some cloning in the top left corner or is that just like the depth of field seems odd in that top left corner to me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It, because it's sharper, it's sharp in that top left corner and then it kind of yeah. down here, it's falling off here, but then you're back here. Yeah, you're that's here and all the way through here. So sharp, blurred, unless and it's then a sharp again, unless it's like a couch or a cushion that's coming forward and it's not a flat wall, then that piece might come into, uh, it might come into focus. And in that case, I would, I would try to blur it out. Mm -hmm. So it, it adds more depth, um, and feels more natural because, because, you know, the papers and the paw are already falling out of focus. And so I'd probably take that top left corner and take it out of focus. Cool. Which is easy enough to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just use a gradient in Photoshop and, Use uh, one of the, the lens blur tools. Mm -hmm. All right. Mark Harris, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark. And the next shot is from Michael DeRay. <laughs> oh, <I like> this. <laughs> he titled this one. I got to read the caption. This one. He titled this one uh, something around uh, jailbreak because these guys are trying to get Attempted her in the jailbreak. Yeah, yeah. The lookout and the lackey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's your turn to dig. <laughs> <laughs> we're not digging we're not digging <laughs> there's nothing happening here human move right along move right along <laughs> no man this is like the 57th attempt but they're like oh, we've never done this before uh -huh. this is the first try um no i i i dig i love the composition i love that square format um the color treatment is done really really well uh you know, I wish we had a little bit more light in in secondary puppy back there on the left, like a little bit more brightness just in in the in the subject matter. But yeah, or maybe maybe just to see his eyes a little bit better. Uh, yeah, have to look up, you know. Yeah, yeah, but but I, I like that the primary subject, the top, you know, the the right side is nice, and we're getting, making eye contact, and the brightness is there, and we can see, we know, you know, we're not distracted too much. There's no secondary distraction in the image, so this is well done. Very cool. 
I love the black and white too. Jailbreak, the black and, yeah. The black, the black and white works for the jailbreak theme. You know, because it feels like it does, and it simplifies the, you know, it simplifies the story as as we've said. You know, it really does simplify everything. We see the puppies first. Yeah. Cool, Michael Duray. Thank you, sir. Look at that one. Michael Rhino's up next. Wow. We call it the Sphinx. The Sphinx. <laughs> yeah. He looks like a Sphinx, right? Yeah, he does. He does. Wow. That is such a great shot. I'm I'm pulling that up on, on my side too, just so I can get even more resolution out of it. Yeah. Wow, that is that is really beautiful. Um I I I just you know what I'm gonna say, right? <laughs> Oh, the amputation. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I wish we see we we saw the whole dog just laying in the dunes with just a little a little bit. bit more. Extend that frame out just a a little bit more to yep. to this side, right? Just so that you have a little bit yep. more over there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he, you know, you may you may have that. You may have that. You know, Michael, if you have that, you know, maybe post that and let's just kind of see how it looks. But mm -hmm. you know, laying in the sand, there's not a lot of footprints. It's super clean. Uh, the sweeping lines of the dunes in the background, and then you've got sort of the triangles of the dog's ears. Um, I, I just think that you know that that juxtaposition of those shapes and colors are just just stunning. It's yeah, it's really nice. Do you think do you think uh, this would have been better or not as effective in black and white? I, this would be really effective in black and white, but it doesn't need to be. We don't have distracting colors. Uh, the nice thing about black and white is that the gold tones in in the dog's fur would really pop out <clears throat> but th we don't really need that right we don't we don't have distracting colors so mm -hmm. so it works really well yeah i like it i like this is a lot this is definitely when you'd you'd print and put in the in the gallery at home right amongst the other family photos yes yeah absolutely yeah very cool all right and another dog represented this one by Nora. <laughs> this guy, the Red Baron. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. You got to zoom in on his face a little bit. That is so good. Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get out look of my way. That. Yeah. Look at that. That is cool. Really good. I like the processing on that one, too. What do you think? I do, too. I think it fits the theme, which, you know, which speaks a lot to, you know, how we process or tweak or tune our images is sometimes the subject matter asks for a particular style. If this was bright, radiant, saturated color, it wouldn't come across the same. You know, this is this has been, you know, patinaed and, and it's got that pseudo sloppy border and mm -hmm. I, I dig it. The faded corners and very well done. Yeah, very well done. Oh, you know, one thing I was going to mention on this this previous photo um, here, La Duderina in the chat says um, he likes uh, he or she likes the lack of disturbance in the sand. Yep. Um, I like that, too. I was just thinking that I was thinking if you had ex if you had extended, had a little bit more space on the right here. And then even though the sand was probably going to be disturbed over there to take it out of there in Photoshop. So it just looked like the dog somehow magically. <laughs> <laughs> that would been really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Uh, but this shot is awesome. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is exactly what I would expect to see with this subject matter. So it's well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those pugs. All right. Thank you, Nora. Next shot is from Ron. <laughs> that's a happy dog right there this is just pure <laughs> happiness in a frame right? yeah yeah pure don't you do you ever like can humans ever get to this level of happy <laughs> is it even possible Not without chemical assistance i don't know <laughs> <laughs> You know, not without with a little chemical boost, you can't get here. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I need a helping hand. Yeah, I need I need yeah. a little bit of happy. Yeah, I know, I know. That's gonna be a new strain of marijuana in California uh, called canine or something. Yeah, <laughs> it probably is. Um, no, I, I just you know right away. Th this is this is amazing that it that it tells the story. You know, even even somebody like me who doesn't own a dog or hasn't owned a dog for a really long time, like we understand the joy and it, the fun. And I want to throw the stick next. Like I want to be the next human to give that puppy some happiness. And I want to throw mm -hmm. the stick out there. Yeah. Um, I, I I even like the tight crop on the on the bottom. I would tighten the top. I would bring the top down. 
as well. If if we had space anywhere, I would like to see the space in front of and below the dog. Uh, but we don't really need it behind. So, you know, in this sense, we could just really crop that top like, so that the distance from the bottom is this to the paws would be the same, like from the top of the head or the ears to the top of the frame. So I would just like, crop that. Like, like right around here, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 We really don't need it. Yeah. Cause we know he's coming out of the ocean. Um, and we don't need any more hints to tell us where he's coming from. I like the composition though. I yep. mean, I, I toyed, I, you know, wrestled with, is it too tight in the lower right hand corner? But I don't think so. I, I think it's, I think it's totally fine. Yeah, no, I think that because it's such an active shot and there's, you know, the water is splashing and the ears are blurry from motion and, you know, the dog is like in full run. I think that tight composition works. I think it would also work if we had a little bit more space, like I said, bottom and then camera left, but only slightly just to give it uh, to give the dog place to go. But we certainly don't need it in the in the top. But I, I, I like it just the way it is. Yeah, no, for sure. Very cool. All right, moving right along. Troy Miller. <laughs> this is my Saturn. Cat. Yeah, this is my cat Saturn. Um, oh just... wait, and a watermark on here. Is I don't there? Think I've ever... Oh yes. shoot! I don't think I've ever seen one of your images watermarked Damn before. It. That was an accident. <laughs> um, Caught it. But yeah, I love really... this eye. I love that eye. I he he just has the most gorgeous eyes, and of all the cats that we've ever had. He is the, uh, and it's weird to say, but he's very dog-like. Like, he listens to commands, and he behaves, and he responds to, to how we talk to him. He's very independent. But he looks at you. And and that, that to me, was just something that I found to be really strange um, for, for all of our cats that we've, all, we've had forever. Is he looks right in your eyes. He looks right at you. So. Isn't that crazy? He just makes eye contact with you? And he does. It. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he, he looks right at your eyes. And our other cats don't do that. Um, so I I was he was standing here looking out the window, kind of like what your cat was doing. And I was playing with my macro lens and I went, hey, I'm going to photograph your eye. And he let me take two shots and then he walked away. Of course, that's all you get. <laughs> human. Get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> your camera. <laughs> yeah. What uh, what macro lens did you shoot this with? Uh, this is shot with the Nikon Z7 and the one oh I think it's the one oh five or the one twenty. Okay. Macro the Nikon. This is the Nikon macro. I think it's one oh five. Cool. It looks tack sharp. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's he moved quick. I was testing the new animal tracking autofocusing on that camera and it worked. Is it, does it work? Yeah, it works really good. Yeah, it doesn't work as a macro because it doesn't know. Right. But, yeah. yeah it has overall. No idea. Yeah. This this shot I can see blown up big, right? I mean, you wouldn't put this in a cat hater's house, but a cat lover's house, <laughs> yeah. It would probably freak those people out. But a cat lover's house, I just see it big with a nice thick border on it, you know? It just looks it looks very artistic. It's yeah. very cool. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite. It's going to be on my on my desktop for a little while. Nice. Nice. All right. Next shot is from Peter Levshin. <laughs> Peter has a cat too. Everybody has a cat. Why is Twip, Peter, Twip is Peter, full of cat people? What is going on? Peter, where'd you find a cat? Like, whose cat is this, Peter? This is not. Oh, does he not have a cat? Does I he don't not think he has a cat unless he adopted a cat. He's a cat person, though. He would love a cat. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering if those sunbeams are real. Uh, well, you know, or does it matter if they're real or not? It doesn't matter, but but they look pretty good. Mm -hmm. They look pretty good. Um, I don't. I don't see how the environment that those would exist in. So, right. That's the challenge, right? When we do composites or we drop in things, like even though our our we may not be able to identify it, our brains can look at that and like I don't understand where it's coming from or what it's landing on or <clears throat> or whatnot. But I like the shot. I mean, I, I think it's. I think it's cool. I think it's very cute. Yeah, it is. It is. And we all. If you. If you. I was going to say own a cat, but you don't really ever really own a cat, right? <laughs> if you've lived with a cat, <laughs> you know that, you know, this is this is that look of I see something that's interesting up there or there is some food on the counter that I smell and yep. I'm going to I'm going to give it my full attention until it is in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm going to will it. <laughs> You're going to will it. This is a cat willing something to I'll happen. Will it over here. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Peter Levshin. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good shot, buddy. All right. Laura Patton. Oh, look at, look at that. Cat string theory right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. 
That's really cute. I wonder how many cats there are on Earth right now. At least more like than house four. cats. More like than four or five. Cats. Yeah, four or five. Yeah, that's it. They just take shifts, move around, change their colors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What if that's a Maine Coon? Or that's that doesn't look fuzzy enough to be a Maine Coon. I have a hard time find identifying them all, but it looks like a it looks like a, a Maine Coon a little bit. Mm, yeah, I don't know my cat breeds. I don't know. Sure. It's got an M on its forehead. And that means Maine Coon, right? Oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Or Just if you're looking it. at him from the back, it's Wolverine. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Upside down. Yeah. Uh, you know, great shot. I love the I love the timing and the expression. I think that the the background and and the and the floor and you know the background material that the cat's laying on is a, is it just needs to be burned down, right? We just don't need all of that. Yeah. Oh, look at that face. I could feel that sandpaper tongue on my arm right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cool shot. I love cool. the color too. So this is obviously an intentional portrait, right? She's got the background, got the cat on yep. the background. The background is blue. I have a, a red foreground element to pop against that blue. Um, it looks like the horizon is a little bit tilted to the right, a little bit, or or a, or maybe it was just shot at an angle that's giving me that illusion. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it could be. I, I don't think it really matters. I think you know where the you know where the the, the the parts of this photo that I think that need to be worked on is that the front foreground is brighter than the middle ground and then the background, right? So we need to make sure that we draw our attention to our subject. So simply just burning down uh, the foreground and the background a little bit and, you know, focusing on our subject's face. That can also have been done during lighting. You know, you can scrim the foreground, you know, cast a shadow there or, you know, move your light if you're using a light source. Um, like if it's a window, then you just use a, a reflector to block the light. Well, when you're when you're doing a portrait like this and you're showing the whole body of the animal, the there's space on the left side of the frame and then the, the foot on the right side is very close to the border mm -hmm. of the frame. Would you center the animal more or give it more space on the right side or is it good like this? I would definitely center. I mean, I think when you when you shoot a moving subject like this that you need to shoot a little bit wide so you can crop and perfect that crop later, it's hard to get that stuff in camera because, you know, the cats could be moving really quickly and it's hard to make that perfect composition and get focus. So, but definitely, I mean, looking at your image, if you if you're going to be really tight on the on the you know like camera right, like where the feet is, you need to do something about that negative space on the camera left. It just mm -hmm. doesn't it doesn't serve any purpose. You could really tighten up the crop all the way around. Yeah, yep, yeah, I agree. All right, Laura Patton, thank you. And Mark Domkey, look at this regal guy. Wow. Girl. Wow, look at those big Does ears. Does cat have a cat necklace? What is this? Yeah. Yeah, it has the universe in there. Is that the a cat? Stuff. Is that a cat right there we're looking at? I don't know. It's like... <laughs> what was it? Remember yeah. Men in Black, the... the, the they had a necklace on on one of the was it the cat had a necklace? Yeah, I the, think it was a cat with the universe in it. it. Had the universe in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... You know, really, really beautiful animal. I love the black whiskers. That's just that's just killer. That's it's a nice super touch. stealth cat. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, you will not see me. Yeah, but then he's got the ears with white in him. So giving his position away completely if yeah. he's trying to listen to whatever he's going after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, in this image, it really makes me think of uh, direction of light. Uh, this this feels very on camera flash. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, just direction of light, even just pointing your strobe, if it's on your camera, pointing it up or, you know, reflecting it somehow. If it's a pop up, you know, you just you can reflect that light up somehow so it isn't just blasting your subject. Yeah. And what do you what do you think about the vignette on this? You know, the, it, the oval it, is that technically a vignette or is it just a, a yeah, frame? Yeah, it's a vignette. Um I, you know, it's, it's, it feels very like old world classic to me. So I think like mm -hmm. if you put this little detailed border around the outside square, you know, it would feel like a, like a postcard. I don't think it adds a lot to this image though. I think that it'd be better if it was a darker vignette, very subtle, bringing us into the, into the, the mask of the cat's face. Yeah. Very nice. And there's I, that red. You see that red down there? That's a little distracting. Yeah, that's like a reflection. Yeah. Yeah, take, yeah, take out those there. out. Yeah, probably that and that. Yeah, get rid of that. I'd love to know what kind of cat that is. That's that's very interesting. Black nose, black, black whiskers. That's mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cool. Poor cat. Poor black cats. I remember they used to get such a bad rap. I don't know if they still do. But with, uh, you know, black cats allegedly being bad luck. Right. Uh, right. I remember my dad used to, like, if when I was growing up, if a black cat crossed in front of the car while we were driving, he would literally make a U-turn. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm not even kidding. He would go in an entirely different direction. He's like, you know what? You know, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> it is. It is. So I think that is our last one. Yeah, that was the last Ooh, one. Nice. Look at that, man. Okay, so we have uh, we have some decision making to do on uh, our favorite. You know, it's it's a really tough call because as as much as I love cats and as many wonderful images there is in here, including the vole, I'm I'm really drawn to um, Armando Brooks. I am too. In fact, I love it because we talked about this a little bit before. But you're you know obviously free to pick whatever you want. Um, but my favorite was also this guy right here. Yeah, Armando. Yeah, the, the angry, the angry little critter with I the short legs. Dig <laughs> it. Yeah, it's so much personality in that face. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Look at that. <laughs> oh man. Do we have a name? Do we have a dog's name? We don't have a name. Oh, we got. I got to look in the community to see what the. No, name I is. just looked. Yeah, he didn't. Oh, say. he didn't put the name in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I'm a fan of that one. Win. That win. that one for the win, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, we need a name. We need a name so that we can give the, the dog proper props. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now that we put them all over the internet, come on. Yeah. You know, he needs to get his royalties. That's right. Uh, That's right. Uh, so good. Well, thank you, everybody, for participating. Great yep. shots. Great shots. This is a load of fun looking at people's, people's pets. I, I, you know... I got to get another cat. I got to get a cat. <laughs> so it's at now least it's two. I think, yep. I think two, maybe two cats. Um, so next week, we said color, right? Color. So, so you're 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 the master of color, right? In some, I mean, you're you're shooting weddings and you use color to pop certain objects and yep. and people, and so you use it, right? You're not just a, okay. Here's a shot, and okay, got yep. some color in it. You actually use color as a compositional element. Yep. Give folks some tips on on how they can use color for next week's critique. Well. Uh... Not just thinking of color just as a subject matter, but the way that our brains like to look at color, you know, the the, the bright reds um, and yellows and oranges can tire our eyes out, but it also draws our attention. So, you know, imagine using those colors in the color wheel to complement each other. So if you want to have like a bright red flower in a field of green or blue, uh, compositionally, that's gonna that's gonna be really beautiful. It's gonna stand out. That subject's gonna be there. Um, you could also just do something in an in an environment where you have a lot of monochromatic tones with that hint of color, very much like that like that flower. Mm -hmm. Too much color, too much bright color. Like imagine a uh, like shooting into like a box of Legos um, can be can be distracting because there's no single subject matter. So using color to highlight your subject would be really great. So imagine you're doing a portrait of somebody walking down train tracks and they're wearing a red shirt or a bright yellow shirt or a white shirt. They're going to pop out from the background. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Think, things, interesting. things like that. Yeah. You know, what also be interesting is, uh, yeah, we said color, right. But also experimenting with color in black and white, right? Like you're yes. talking about like, like infrared, that's also color, right? It's a, it's it's a it's a use of color, but in in the case of black and white, looking at the different channels and what those different channels of RGB or CMYK, but RGB are doing, and you know, it's taking that channel out and doing cool things with it. Right, right, color. flipping colors. Mm -hmm. um, and think think about using color in a way that isn't just oh, there's a you know, there's this nice swash of of red or green or blue. Think about how to take a subject and maybe add color to help help it stand out more, right? So if you want to do something abstract like water drops or splashes or something like that, you add color to that water drop, right? So like a blue drop on a white board or something or a black background backlit. Now the blue is really going to stand out of the red or whatever color, but it's a splash. Or it's a drip that's running down your arm or a, or a model with a tear that a tear is a color as opposed to just a normal tear color, you know, 
So you're going to in, inject color into that subject matter that that sort of like hijacks the visuals or helps you with the visuals. I'm curious how you feel. Remember, remember the old um, that old technique. I don't know if you call it old, but it was a technique called selective color, where you know the the whole image was black and white, and then the rose was red or you know, not a fan. The car, the, <laughs> the, there's a car in Cuba, and everything is black and white, but the 57 Chevys red or something. Would you? What do you think about that? I'm not. I'm not a fan. I. I just. Why not? You know, I just. I just think it's corny. I just don't think it's something that I'm gonna <laughs> like. You know. Um, I think if you know, maybe there's a way to do that in 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 a, in a way that's gonna be very very non non uh campy and non-stereotypical and so maybe tell a story in an amazing way that i haven't seen so i don't want to completely write it off because you know there's a lot of creative people out there sure um i just always i always think back to like walking through a gallery looking up at an artist that that spent you know months painting intentionally putting color everywhere and i just don't see painting in black and white and then on the table there's a red apple yeah. you know i just like i i don't know i just I, I remember when I was learning to print black and white, I went through a phase where, you know, I was printing black and white. And then uh, we had these these dyes. You re they were retouching dyes for color. Oh, yeah. I have a print. box right there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we can make the rose red, you know, <laughs> and, and non photographers would love it. Right. Like, oh, that's amazing. You're so good. You're like, yeah, I just put some food coloring on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, well, before we before we sign off, um, I want to uh, show a late entrant to the to the this category, although this one is not, you know, it's not eligible to be included in this critique. But Tim Engel just just sent a shot in that I want to share. Uh, this is his entrant into the uh, the Secret Life of Pets category. <laughs> <laughs> This just in from Tim. He just texted oh, this over to me right now. <laughs> Tim, that's so dark. Tim, this is this is how Tim feels during the pandemic. This is, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, with the whole pork shortage and everything going on. Right? Oh my gosh. Tim. All right. Tim needs some help. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Tim. All right, next time, submit this to the critique so we can talk about it live. Yeah, later. yeah. But wow. I don't wow. ever need to see that again. It's okay. Oh, you're going to see it again in your nightmares tonight. That's what you're going to see. <laughs> you're going to see that head hovering above you before you go to bed. Um, well, cool. All right, well, that's it for this week's critique. This was live, man. Yeah, we it went did this well. We whole thing live. Yeah. We live streamed it. The, the ATEM Mini and everything worked just fine did on the hardware crash. side. Nothing crashed. Well, we haven't seen the recording. My video I didn't go to didn't go to turd right away. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> yeah, normally, it, yeah, normally it waits at least thirty minutes before you go to <laughs> yeah. Pac Man status. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it looked good. Very cool. All right. So yeah, I'm looking forward. We'll do this again next week if uh, yeah. you know people enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep doing this. So yeah, this will be uh, Twit Pro folks. This will be in the community immediately now because there's no editing necessary, and it's uh, you know I'll just flip it to public and people can check it out. Nice, no work. I'm nice. Done. I don't have to edit this. I just gave myself <laughs> an hour of my life back. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. Love it. Cool, man. All right. Any uh, anything on your side you want to announce before we shut the stream down? Uh, you know, um, F64 Live, as you know, you and I are working on some amazing collaborations. Uh, September 12th and 13th, going to be in Southern California and Santa Ana, working on a digital component and then a live in-person component on the 13th. So keep an eye out on F64Live.com for some more information. Uh, but that's it. You know, everybody stay safe and have a good time and enjoy the peace and quiet for a little while, you know, yeah. I know, I know everybody wants to kind of get out, but you know, hang in there and we'll get back to normal. Yeah. Stay we'll be back. We'll be back soon. We're at the home stretch. So don't yep. give up now. Right. <laughs> don't give up now. I'll be the last person in, in your area to get sick. So, right. Right. All right. Well, cool. All right, man. Well, I will see you uh, in the next critique. Well, I'll see you before then, but right. we'll see you like this in the next. Critique. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Thanks, right, everybody, everybody, for participating in the live stream. We appreciate it. Love your feedback on this, either in the YouTube video or in the community. Um, yep. Let us know what we can do more of or less of, et cetera.
Yep. All right. Yep. We'll see you guys next time. Perfect. Bye, guys.